what are some of the customer business issues or CBIs that uh, pack strapping can help solve when it comes to customers? Sure. So if you look here, we, we highlight a few uh, specific ones, and, and there are some that are interrelated. Uh, but the things we hear often from our customers are around um, cost, performance, and sustainability. Um, we will occasionally come uh, with some issues around safety, although um, that's uh, usually already something that's in place in a number of the types of customers we talk to. But we are always talking to customers about uh, costs, uh, performance, and um, environmental or sustainability. So on the cost side, one of the, the most common ones that we deal with is working with customers who are currently using steel strapping, which we do sell and distribute um, through the, the, the Granger sales model, um, but converting them from steel to polyester. It doesn't work in every application. There are certain applications that steel is a requirement and will always be a requirement. However, there are a number of applications where steel is being used because it's just what's always been done. And mm -hmm. we normally have to work with the, uh, the customer to make sure they understand that they can get to the same type of performance in securing their load using a polyester strap with less material, less weight of strap, a safer product because steel, when it is cut, can recoil and can hurt someone, whereas polyester mm -hmm. is, is going to be much more pliable and, and much, much less likely to hurt somebody. And at the end of the day, when you do the math, the cost on the steel coil that is not as long as the polyester coil, you wind up getting more for a, a less expensive product in a polyester coil. So net effective, their overall cost of strapping product comes down. Inside of that as well, there's more options to close a strap loop with polyester more cost effectively, a la a battery tool or even a piece of equipment to do it than you can with steel, where you really have to do some form of manual or manual pneumatic technology to close the steel strap loop. On the productivity side or the performance side, um, again, that kind of gets back into that, that pyramid we were just talking about where you kind of look at the level of strapping work that needs to be done. And then you can gradually take a customer from manual process with a buckle or a seal and hand strapping product to the first level typically would be a power tool. So they can now get a more consistent tension in the in the area where they're strapping um, and not have to use a buckle or a seal. Uh, and then moving on from a power tool to some form of automation or pallet strapping, um, where now you have a system doing the work as opposed to somebody manually activating a tool. Um, so really it speaks to, you can get away from I would say most commonly in the packaging line for a, a, a volume user, um, if they've got you know 10 to 20 to 30 pallets going through at the end of their packaging line, you can actually fully automate that process and then take the labor, whether it be one person or two person, two people at the end of that line and reallocate them into your production where you can make more product and make more money effectively from, from that, uh, that labor, which we all know right now labor is very difficult to, to find. Um, and then on the sustainability front, um, we, we talk quite a bit about the fact that um, strap product, whether it be plastic strap, polypropylene, polyester, or steel strap, in fact, um, is two ends. One, it's all made from recycled content. We're not talking about uh, virgin steel or virgin um, polyester polypropylene. We're using recycled content to a very, very large degree in all of those products. But then they're also fully recyclable back into the same uh, scrap market. So you can take your strap and you can recycle your, your steel into the steel market. You can recycle your polypropylene into the poly, you know, into the plastics recycling market as you can your polyester. Um, there are also some technologies that are there to um, uh, make that a little more uh, efficient in how it's recycled. But most places you can you can put it through your standard recycle stream other than the steel. I would definitely recommend talking to your local municipality about a, uh, a steel um, recycling process because most municipalities of a scale will definitely have that availability. And then of course, on the safety side, we, we, we talked a little bit about the inherent um, safety of uh, plastic over steel from a recoil perspective. Uh, but there's also another bit, which is um, you're really not going to cut yourself on plastic strapping when you're moving the plastic strapping manually 
Whereas steel still has some very sharp edges and, and always recommended to be wearing gloves uh, when you're moving steel strapping. And then of course, just in general, the inherent safety that we have as to why do we strap? Well, it's securing the load in transit. And, and that's the most important thing. We want the customer's goods to get where they need to be the way they're expected to arrive and nothing different than that.